Good evening, everybody. So, INFJs, reflecting on my past as an INFJ, because I live in an area where everything's about high school and teen years for some reason. I don't know why. This video is not about that, but it's what led me down this train of thought. Teen years are not good times for INFJs, and I'm going to explain why. And this is especially true for male INFJs, although I'm sure it's not much better for female INFJs. So, young INFJs, if you are listening, pay attention. So, you know, when I was a teen, all the boomers were like, oh, high school is the best four years of your life. It's not. Trust me. For those of you that are struggling with this is the peak of your life, well, if high school is the peak of your life, then you're Al Bundy. And I've spoken on point, I've spoken about this point before, but I want to expand on it in a, different, in a different way. I wouldn't be here if that were the case. If, if you get my drift when I'm dancing around because of the algorithm. But no, it's not. And... I've spoke, I said I spoke before about why, you know, high school's not that important, but this is specifically why it's tough, why teen years in general are tough for INFJs. Well, for one, we're introverts. And when you're a young introvert, like a teen, you don't really, you haven't honed your intuition, you haven't learned how to trust it. You know who you are, but you sure as hell don't know how to express it. And you probably don't know why you don't fit in. Those are the main points. So, INFJ males don't fit in with other teenage males. Why is that? Well, because all they want to do is get laid. And, you know, they're not worried about, like, romance or love or anything. They just want to get it in. And they're usually pretty sleazy about how they do it. And that doesn't appeal to us. In fact, you know, all those high five and stories about getting girls drunk and all that. We ain't high five. Yo, bro, good job. Congratulations, bro. No, well, or at least in my case, that didn't. that's not how it went down. It usually ended up me fighting somebody. So, yeah, in that respect, we are, you know, not because most of us are demisexuals, we are not interested in one night stands. And we are certainly abhorred of, you know, any guy that takes advantage of any girl, we will never do the bros before hoes kind of thing. You know, personally, I think anybody who does something like that should be judged harshly, regardless of how good they play the sports bowl or, or, you know, who his daddy is, or if his mummy sits on a throne. Yes, I'm talking about Andrew Windsor. But for INFJs, it's a rough time. So teen years are all about, like, partying, superficial things, materialism, you know, who's got this car and who wears this shit and, you know, like, loud parties and all that. And that's just not where the INFJ is because... Although a loud party can be fun, we still want that deep conversation. We're not into, you know, superficial things. So it can be tough because what appeals to the masses at that time doesn't appeal to us. INFJ, a 14-year-old INFJ is already looking for his soulmate. It's like, where's she at? Where's that blue rose at? We already know, you know, what our type is. Like, for an INFJ, a lot of teens would be like, well, I don't really know what I want. No, an INFJ teen knows what they want. The question is, is A, can they find it? And B, especially from a male, if they do find it, will they able, be able to make the first move? Uh -uh. And that is, leads into another reason why teen years are tough for INFJs. Because even when we do find someone that seems to get us, that we really like, that we think understands us, that we think likes us, we, most of us at that time, you know, can't process or can't recognize when we're overthinking something. So we'll overthink the hell out of like making the first move and asking her out. And we'll keep thinking and thinking like, I need this validation, that validate. Like it, it, it's, you know, there's never enough signs and we're never sure. And we're always going to assume the worst. And oh, she's just being nice. And oh, I'll make a fool out of myself and all that. And But if I do this, 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 and this first, that'll sure my chances why can't she make the first move yeah 
that kind of thing. Also, at that age, when you're that young, it is it is unlikely you know what an NITI loop is. And as a teenage INFJ, you're going to be in them a lot. And if you don't know what it is, you know, you're not really going to get out of it unless you do it by accident, which from what I remember didn't happen all that much. So you have that to deal with. Um, another point, teen years are all about living in the moment. IMFJs are bad at that. We can be spontaneous with like somebody that understands us that, you know, we like spending one-on-one -on -one time with, but that's not the same as like shooting from the hip and going with the flow. Yeah, no, we're, we're pre-planning. You know, when I was, I was planning out like what I wanted, I was obsessing about what I would do in my career when I was in high school, like after college, in, in large part, I was figuring out how the hell I could get out of this area, but still, it's a pretty common thing. For INFJs, you know, very forward thinking that way. And another major point is we are not followers. INFJs are, you know, individuals. We do what we want, wear what we want, say what we want, listen to what we want, be who we want to be. Even if we can't express that person, we're still going to you know, appear as that person and not bend who we are to fall in line with fads or trends, which, you know, teen years are all about. So that isolates us even more than our natural introversion does. An INFJ is not going to pretend to be someone they're not to try to impress people that we probably don't even like and in most cases can barely tolerate because they're fake. We can't stand fake people. We can't stand gossip, which is, you know, which is really close to gaslighting. It's no coincidence that those that were the best at uh, gossiping in their teen years turned to gaslighting in their adult years. Yeah. Connection. Yes. So we're not into all that rumors and because we're our own person. We'd rather be isolated and alone, lone wolf mode, than pretend to be someone we're not because we're not good at it, one, and it must be exhausting to constantly have to pretend to be, you know, someone you're not. I mean, who would want to do that? Unless you're doing it, like, professionally as an actor and getting paid, that's different, but I'm saying in your personal life, who would want to do that? All for the approval of some people that claim superiority for whatever reason. And... Which leads to another point, a lot of people do do that, you know, INFJs are realists. Yes, I know we are idealists most of the time, but we're realists in the fact that we know high school's not that important. Now, I'm not talking like I've spoken in other videos about getting in a college career. I'm talking socially. You know, INFJ, a freshman in high school, INFJ is like, you know, people that are acting like it's the end of the world. And it's like, you know, this is only four years, like love it or hate it. You know, this is four years. Like it's not... It's not a part of life you can extrapolate out to last longer. Like, for instance, a good amount, a good number of people go in the military right after high school and they go for four years and they get out. That's a pretty common thing. But if somebody was in the military for four years and wanted to extend that out and make a career out of that, they could do that. That is an option. That is not an option with high school. It's four years, then it's over. You know, there's no keeping it going. And I, I knew some people that were crying and shit and wanted nothing more than that. Yeah, yeah, it's really sad. And I've seen it when, because college is a pretty good time for me. But if you're a freshman in college and you're crying saying you miss high school, you're doing college wrong. So, yes. And another big point why teen years are rough for INFJs is because there's a lot of group think in high school. Because remember... You know, it's it's hundreds or maybe a couple thousand of people that have largely known each other for years and grown up together. And they're all from the same area and know all the same things and go all the same places. So there's not a lot of, you know, diversity of culture or thought or, I mean, hell, it's funny. When I was in high school in 2004 during the election, I was one of two people who spoke out against George Bush. Two. All the other good little robots were following lockstep behind George W. Bush because he's pro-life. It was a Catholic school. Yes, the only two that spoke out against the war and his tax cuts and, you know, well, yeah, and Katrina 
and um, Halliburton, you know, all that was me, who was uh, then in the broom closet witch, and my friend Jason, who was Jewish. So, yeah, everybody else. So I illustrate that point to prove that that group think that no, there's no challenging of opinion. It's like, this is, this is what you are to believe. This is what you are supposed to do. You know, this is Chester County. You must register Republican. And that's just an example. But there's a lot of, like, group think like that that go on in your teen years. And if, A, you don't naturally fit into that narrow box, nor do you want to, and you refuse to, and you insist on being who you are, it's not going to be a good time. But when you go to college, you know, you go to college, there's people from all over the state, the country, the world. And there's you know, in my case, 40,000 people as opposed to, it was like 450 in my class in high school. So times four, let's just say like about 2,000 people in high school, 40,000, 2,000, all from the same county, from all over. So know that, that when you get to college, chances are, unless you go to a really small college, you're, there's a good chance you're going to find some people that actually think like you and understand you and you can have that deep conversation with which is good so teen years are rough that way because there's no it, it's all like this is what is right fall in line no 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 channeling my teen self there for a minute no i did an epic infj stare back then without knowing what it was it was classic <clears throat> so there's that um Another major point about why it's rough, because the big one is you probably don't know what an INFJ is or that you are one, which is frustrating because particularly if you're male, chances are, at least in your class in high school, if you're an INFJ male, unless you go to a very big high school, chances are you're probably the only INFJ male. So there's not like someone else like you even that you can find or say, this person's a lot like me. We need to compare notes. No. And you probably think that you're this freak of nature and everybody around you is telling you how weird and eccentric you are and that you need to get with the program and fall in line and, and go have one night stands and stuff. And that was just my mom telling me that. So imagine what, you know, I heard from other people. Yeah, you probably have that going on too. So it can be a very, a very difficult time. You know, what I would su suggest to teen INFJs is you most likely, as I did, relate to people older than you that you know outside of, of high school. Like in my case, there were the guys that I worked out with at Gold's Gym that were all between like five and 10 years older than me. The same, you know, goes for the people I did modeling with in New York. They were all like college age or slightly older. All the people I served with as a volunteer firefighter EMT were all older than me. So you can find a, a group of people that understand you when you're, you know, don't think, don't fall into that trap of like, you must interact with people in the high school and like, don't fall into that trap. That's the whole world. You're probably going to be better off, you know, hanging out with older friends about five years older than you and you being the baby of the group. That That's what got me through because I did have a lot of fun and stuff I did outside of that awful building. Yeah. So, yeah, um, if by chance there's somebody that you think might understand you, you know, in, in, in the walls of that bubble, try to, try to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and I'll give a, I'll end with this, a little tip for those of you that are not INFJs, but you're trying to get close to a teenage INFJ and you just can't crack why you can't, well, an INFJ will be honest with you, but here's the thing. Because for a teenage INFJ, you have to make the first move and you have to talk to the INFJ one on one. You know, a, a, a teen INFJ, you can't like try to get them to open up with it with you and your three girlfriends like, oh, interrogation time. What are they up to? This must be sinister. Who put them up to this? Why am I? What kind of drama am I being drug into now? Kind of thing. So, yes, one on one. And be honest. And the INFJ will be honest too. And then go from there. And if the INFJ decides that they can trust you, then you'll know all about them. You'll know if an INFJ trusts you. You'll know. You'll also know if, if you lie to them and they door slam you too. Because we do that without knowing what it is. All right. So I hope that was helpful for my young INFJs out there. 
you know, because I got some comments about the other one I did about why high school didn't matter. But I wanted to get into why teen years are rough for an INFJ, and it seems to be a pretty common pattern. So I expanded on that. I hope it was helpful. Trust your intuition, young INFJs. Like, seriously, learn to trust your intuition. Save yourself a lot of time and heartache and being mad at yourself for not doing it. Just trust your intuition. It's got an 85% chance, statistically, that it's right. Those are good odds. And, you know, don't sell out your integrity to fit in, like I said, and like your brain's already telling you, no matter who's who and what's what and groups and all that, remember, it's only four years and then it's over and you can't go back, <laughs> nor do we want to.